Hey guys, welcome to, uh, it's going to be another vlog, um, but it's mainly an unboxing video. Uh, it's been a short while since I did um, another vlog. I can't remember what the last one I did was. I think it was when I was going for a walk, wasn't it? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, first thing, um, some, for me personally anyway, uh, sad news. I found out today that... Um, Dave Greenfield from The Stranglers unfortunately passed away um, due to, uh, well, relating to the coronavirus. Now, Dave Greenfield, of course, from The Stranglers, fantastic band, one of my favourites, if not my favourite band. It's always a toss-up between them and The Clash, because Clash I grew up listening to. Uh, but Stranglers, about five, six years ago, maybe a little bit before then. I just, I don't know, something about them really resonated with me. Not just like another punk band. In fact, yeah, they were a little bit older than most of the uh, the uh, punk bands that were there. There was a big like sort of emphasis on pub rock with them and a little bit of um, kraut rock. You know, that sort of stuff. Very, you know, Doors like with the well synthesizers and pianos from uh, Dave Greenfield. So really, you know, pioneering band um, that came up mm. along, you know, and they, I think like Hugh Cornwell was in his like thirties when he started. It's mental. So uh, yeah, really sad, sad news to hear that Dave Greenfield has passed away, and uh, it's, it's still not sunk in yet. Do you know what I mean? But. I don't usually get affected that much by celebrity deaths. And apologies about if this video is all out of focus. It's not like purposely supposed to be somber. I just can't be bothered standing here with the lights on because I'm lazy. Um, yeah, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, don't forget. I never usually get affected um, by, you know, celebrity deaths and stuff. But this one's, this one stings. It really, really, really does. I mean, I only found out that Andy Gill um, had passed away. Um, and I only found out that he had about, you know, a month or so ago. And he died before Christmas or something like that from Gang of Four. But yeah, it's, I'm still sort of, um, I don't, it's just not really sunk in, to be honest. I'm not like sat there and cried or anything, but. It just feels, I don't know, it feels weird. And, uh, you know, this, getting all personal again. The Stranglers got me through, probably, or were one of the things that got me through. Um, the, the lowest part um, of my life when I was, uh, you know, living in Germany. And then found out that my you know, relationship was uh, ending. So I was listening to a lot of Stranglers um, at that time. So they sometimes remind me of that situation and what I had but also they just I think it was the sort of like attitude and like the the dirty lyrics although intelligent as well um, that really you know resonated with me at a time like that you know stuff like London Lady Choosy Susie even though you know no ill will towards uh, She You Shall Not Be Named but so um, interrupted then you probably saw my distaste uh, mm -hmm. in the end of that clip but um yeah there's just something about that that music um that really resonated to me resonated with me and that's why now i as much as i adore the, a band like the smiths a lot of their songs have you know really quite personal meanings to me now so stranglers are you know the one just a band for me and when I got to see Hugh Cornwell live, that was just one of my best. And then actually to meet him after the gig, one of my best musical experiences. And it's just a shame that I never got to experience that with um, the current Stranglers lineup. So I was a little bit, I don't know, a little bit apprehensive watching him because Jet Black wasn't isn't drumming anymore due to his health problems. And I rarely, there's only uh, Jean-Jacques Bernal from the original uh, lineup. Not that I've got, you know, I think they're still producing some really good music. And uh, from what I've seen, they put on an absolutely fantastic live show. And Stranglers were a really good 
live band, some of their live albums. They're probably the band that I've got the most bootlegs of, um, albeit in digital format, you know, like demos and uh, gig recordings and just that, that some of the sounds and the musical talent uh, in that band as a whole, and a lot of that came from, especially in the later years, with, you know, from the, like, the likes of Golden Brown, Duchess, uh, Midnight Summer Dream, just some fantastic, fantastic uh, keys. So, yeah, I'm gonna probably gonna have a couple of beers because um, I know Harry's gonna be doing a, a bit of a, a stream offline, so we can discuss our uh, formats for future shows and stuff. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a light on because you can he see, which is probably a good thing because I'm an absolute mess today. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So happy memories, going to probably listen to quite a lot of Stranglers over the next few days and uh, have a, a couple of drinks in honour to uh, one of the men in black. And uh, Everybody loves you when you're dead. There you go. So much happier news, got a box from Adam, uh, well from Harry, um, but he sent my box uh, to Adam with Adam's box and then Adam kindly dropped it off for me so harry massive massive thank you already i know there's uh some things in this but um yeah basically there's quite a few mystery beers as well so look out for more mystery beer content but um yeah massive massive thank you harry um definitely owe you one um i was just uh mentioning to him well it was thanks to jake brought it up or else i would have never have known but magic rock are going to be releasing some mini cakes um, tomorrow, Wednesday the 5th. Is it Wednesday? Yeah. Or is it Monday today? No, it's Monday. Oh, it's only Monday. Uh, Tuesday the 5th at 2 o'clock. And um, I'll probably have to uh, tend some vital um, after call work whilst I'm working to uh, place an order. And Common Grounds, they're going to be putting that in mini kegs. So definitely going to pick up one of those and uh, we're actually um, in the middle of preparing to make our own sort of mini little bar in the garden uh, we've managed to well my brother actually it's his idea and uh, he managed to source two um, pallets uh, from a local shop so we're gonna like have them stood up uh, we're gonna get another one um, I'm not too sure how we're gonna do it but basically two pallets stood up put them you know, fast them together have them spotted on the ground and then put a bit of like MDF on top as a bar and then with the little slap the you know the, you know, the support halfway down um, a pallet then we're going to use that sort of like a little bar and then we've bought a gazebo to put over the top and um, yeah we'll probably just like get a, an extension lead and use uh, like a mini fridge or something like that but uh, yeah so mini keg so I might pick up one of well, I'm definitely going to try and pick up Common Grounds. Don't care how much it costs. I want that in mini keg format because that to me is just one of the best beers just ever. And then I'll probably pick up something from a from a brother. But then we'd have to chill it down. We don't really have anything to do it because we don't really have a fridge big enough. But uh, we shall we shall get through this. More importantly, it's fucking Common Grounds in mini keg in your own home. So, oh, sorry. Sorry, Harry's box. <laughs> he likes it when I slaps his box. Uh, why did I say slap when I slaps his box? That was very, very northern. Anyway, so yeah, looking forward to picking one of those up just in time for the bank holiday weekend. I'll probably end up missing out. I always do with stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're getting a little mini bar sorted. Um, it's nothing big, you know, nothing expensive. Um, Beer hooligan's got nothing to worry about with his beer shed, let's put it that way. But um, yeah, we're going to decorate it nicely. And uh, then we're going to get some like cheap bar stools and like a bench and stuff. So it, it'll just be nice, really. So uh, yeah, and it, it's just like we can get mini kegs. Oh, fantastic. We could get like a cheap, you know, cupboard chest sort of fridge that we could hook up outside or something like that. Because we'll need it on all the time. Because, you know, God knows how much good weather we're going to get this year. But, 
yeah it'd be nice and then just like a nice seated outside area uh, trying to do it as uh, cost effective as possible so that's why we've been sourcing um, some pallets and the shop there said they're, they're probably going to get a few more in that we can uh, help ourselves to so I'll keep you guys updated on that one because I'm looking forward to that anyway back on with the box so classy as out we've got um, a an aluminium letter so hey honey bun enjoy these mystery ales much love mr foil of course mr foil uh, i think he's somewhat related to danny kane i'm not too sure what the uh, the whole family history is there but it's questionable so first up we've got farmer's best bitter 3.6 percent abv from ramsbury the brewery from which harry is employed uh, he works for them he's a brewer so uh yeah i had a, a few of the ramsbury stuff uh when i was down visiting harry and some really good stuff um had some proper decent pints so looking forward to that then we've got lily's tropica cider made in somerset likely lightly sparkled four percent because he knows i love cider so uh, yeah i'm sure my teeth aren't going to be absolutely killing the next day after drinking this but drink an update drink an update get in dirty lads so we've got that what else have we got here nicely packaged so we've got the first of our why is why is my message just popped up and not just showing a circle. I don't need you to show up on me full screen, messenger, dickhead. Uh, so that's the, the first of our many mystery beers. So look out for those on the channel. I've still got a few of um, the ones that Adam uh, sent me to upload as well. Then we've got nice can. Another nice can. So I might actually do one of these mystery beers after a have um, Finish this video before I get onto the stream. What else have we got here? Got a, another one. DJ Khaled. Another one. Another one. You loyal. And then we have a can of um, You and I Should Ride the Coast from Leviathan Brewing. Chris Hogman, the Hogman Brewer, a hey, Leviathan. Looking forward to that. Really looking forward to trying that. Because uh, I've enjoyed the stuff that Harry's uh, given me while I've been visiting Harry. And this is one that I'm looking forward to. Cuckoo for Cacao, which is a oatmeal stout at 5.5%. Joe, I might, I'm going to open this tonight. I'm in the mood for a dark beer to... Uh, Remember the, the life and times of one of the men in black, aka Dave Griefmill. So, uh, is that it? Oh, polystyrene. I don't know, razor blades. Or AIDS infested needles in there. You never know with Harry, or Mr. Foyle, I should say. Um, so, yeah, Harry, Mr. Foyle, Danny Kane, the, the gay boy with the headset. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, I do genuinely appreciate that, bud. And uh, I need to sort you out with some stuff. Because I know I've, ju I've just been prior to Adam stealthily and efficiently uh, dropping this off for me. Left him a few things in the in the bin cupboard, as you do. Um, I mentioned the magic rock. What the fuck am I pointing to? Uh, I mentioned the magic rock um, common grounds uh, kegs. And he said he just wishes he could get common ground. So I'll have to sort you something out because um, I know uh, booths locally to me, they they stock a, um, common grounds. So we'll have to get something sorted out. I might, might have a cheeky bike ride to uh, the Bursco booths. Finally got me tyres pumped. Now I'm not talking about many things to do with my body. Um, God, I've not had my tyres pumped for months now. But um, 
didn't need to know that, nor did you need to vision that. Um, so yeah, I've, got, I've finally got me my tyres pumped on my bike. Um, I fixed the handlebars because they were doing that thing where they sort of you turn, and then because the handlebar wasn't tightened properly, the sort of like wheel doesn't turn with the thing. So avoided an RTA there, and uh, I think it's not good. It wouldn't take that long for me to get to booths, although probably somewhat irresponsible um, under the, these current uh, under the current climate. But um, yeah, I'll have to sort you something out, Harry. Um, pick up some sort of local stuff and have it sent to you. Maybe me and Adam can put a bit of a box together or something like that. Because he'd be able to, to pick some common grounds up. I'll just make Adam do all the work. Like, make him bring all the beer to me like he has done. I jest, of course. I do really appreciate you um, passing this box on to me, Adam. And I hope those little few little beers that you, you have with your own mystery beer, um, I hope you get some enjoyment out of those. I just thought to do something nice and simple. And then Harry, I owe you one for this. Although you've still got my uh, blue checkered scarf. Forgot about that. I've just been reminded now. That was a good scarf, that. Hide your face nicely. Basically, Crispy Boy is pestering me for you to, to, to get the scarf. But um, we won't worry about that. Fuck Crispy, he's a fucking prick. Can't stand him. Um, but yeah, Adam, Harry, I'm saying Adam first because it's A before H. H, I'm going to say H. I know it's, you don't spell H with a H, but I don't fucking care. Because it doesn't make any sense that you have the letter H and you don't spell it H. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so some Leviathan, some Ramsbottom. Ramsbottom? Did I say Ramsbottom? Ramsbury. What the fuck am I talking about Ramsbottoms for? We won't go there. And uh, some mystery beer goodness. So, uh, yeah, look out for a lot of content on the channel. And uh, go check out Harry from Blue Nose Beer Reviews, a.k.a. My Beer Bay. And uh, also go check out Adam from... Mersey beers and um, yeah so what else nothing really much to report we had another barbecue this weekend it was a nice chilled weekend work hasn't been too bad it's just saying some customers can't understand what the situation is right now and we're doing our best to fulfill orders like all companies are at the moment but uh, yeah so mind you I've not really had too much hassle over the past few days at work so I'm not going to complain um, took me it was ball like trying to get some menthol cigarettes because I think people are stocking up because they're still going to be banning them on the 20th of May all of that this is the time where I'm happy for you to take extortionate amounts of tax money from me because the situation where you could use that money and also I don't want to have to smoke normie cigarettes do you know what I mean? And I'll probably end up having to like buy 20 packs so I've got enough to see me through for like two weeks. But uh, yeah, anyway, so that that's it. Uh, massive thank you to both Harry and Adam. Of course, Harry for kindly sending these beers over and uh, Adam dropping them off for me. Looking forward to this um, all ending so we can all have a meet up, have a drink and get some beers sent out. I'm going to have to put some boxes together for some people next time I do some orders. But yeah, Magic Rock, Common Grounds. And yes, I'm going to open this to it because I like photographic labels. I mean, he's done a good job on the, the artwork in the can in there. Looking forward to that. Anyway, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's taking care. And um, just remember, fear is the currency of control. See you guys later. Fight the power. No, not just because I've got a don't tread on me flag. I just like the flag. And, you know, I, I like the idea of not letting tyrann yeah, fucking walk on. Tyrannical governments put you down. But I still think you should abide by uh, the, uh, the um, lockdown. And if you're going to go shopping, wear a fucking mask. 
I don't know why people are like, why that's the tipping point of, well, that's impeaching on my civil liberties. It's just a fucking mask. You know, I know it's not good. It's not like a foolproof way of, you know, ending this. But if you've got the symptoms and you don't realise it, and you've got a mask on, you're not spreading your filthy, deadly germs around, are you? Do you know what I mean? So I don't know why that's the part where people are starting to think, well, they're not told me to wear a mask when I don't want to. Just be, don't be a dick and just wear a mask. It's they're like a quid, 50p, whatever. Just do it. <sighs> oh, one more thing. Um, although I rarely don't agree with pretty much 90% of what he says, I, I don't agree with David Icke being uh, taken off the platform. Um, I don't think anyone should, uh, no matter how sensible or ignorant, logical, bigoted. Do you know what I mean? I think people should have a platform like this, you know, and, and have their views out in public. That's the most important thing. I'd much rather have dangerous ignorant views in the public realm then rob have these little groups of fucktards underground not being able to be you know monitored and stuff like that because if you start pushing people underground that's when they come out of the woodwork with violence so and i don't think what david Icke's saying is harmful or dangerous mm. um i don't personally think that uh, you know 5G is going to cause coronavirus. I don't think they go hand in hand. I don't think it's part of like a big overall plan. Uh, I do personally think that they're implementing 5G because they can. Um, and I think they're going to implement, implement a lot of stuff uh, because they could take advantage of the situation. But I don't think there's a big sinister scheme. Um, I think there's some things about 5G that we just don't know about. It's rather untested about the the sort of like radiation levels and you see reports and uh, papers about how it could be weaponized and how it has been weaponized or technology similar to it and people have had, been having concerns for like five six for years um but yeah david ike is he's, he's a nutcase personally he's not gonna be affected too much he's he's making a hell of a lot of money he's wealthy um and he's probably going to end up making a lot more money at the end of this so um you're not really sticking it to him at the end of the day but you know you're encroaching on someone's freedom of speech um, when you're not allowed allowing them to theorize put you know ideas out there ideas are there to be agreed and disagreed with they're there to be debated they're, be they're there to be debunked they're there to be to shot down they're there they're there they're there that sounds so stupid but um but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it because it's David Icke. You know, he's, he's a shill at the end of the day. Anyway, rant over, vlog over. See you guys later. Cheers.